What's up, YouTube? Edgar Jackalope here, Rob Ricks. I'm here today with a movie review of Monsters Dark Continent. This is a movie I was really excited to see. It got, it kept getting pushed back. And, you know, I'm not sure why that was. It was supposed to be released last year. And it's supposed to come out this year in May. So, this is a, a really early review for you. Now, I'm going to discuss a couple of different things. And let me start off by saying right off the bat, you know, I give it a, a 6 out of 10. Um, I really enjoyed the first Monsters. And people, on average, didn't get the deeper messages that were conveyed in it. So, if you watched the first Monsters and you thought it was rubbish, don't bother with this one because this one has more subtext and more messages you really have to scratch below the surface to get into. And it's, it's one of those type of movies where you can sit and debate with your friends what the overall messaging is in it. So uh, that's, that's all I'll say. Um, if you want to hear more about my interpretation of what it is go ahead and continue watching if, if you just wanted a quick hey should I go see it um, here I'll give you a couple of movies to compare it to alright so uh, Brad Pitt's Fury Full Metal Jacket Apocalypse Now American Sniper Lone Survivor mixed with um, big fucking monsters as a backdrop okay so, military hot zones, lots of actions with insurgents, with monsters mixed in it as scenery. Okay? Do not go expecting this to be a military versus monsters in every scene with epic battles. You'll just see monsters getting fucking bombed to shit and you know, shot with shotguns and stuff like that, but it's not an alien encounter movie, at least not yet. I think uh, the third one is probably where it's going to end up, but this one is, is more, uh, think of the very first Monsters as being a tragic love movie with monsters in the backdrop and kind of a question, who is the real Monsters? humans or the monsters okay this movie carries that theme even further where which are the real monsters humanity or these things um, but it also has uh, this one is more a morality movie right um, what's good and bad what's right and wrong uh, the myriad shades of grays in between uh, and military just doing the job okay and what what makes a monster so that's that's it so that's all you need stop watching now because now I'm gonna get into the guts of it all right so you know the first one it was a love thing had the reporter had to go down to, to Mexico had to you know he got forced to take the daughter of the publication he worked for out of the hot zone okay where the monsters kind of caused a, a pretty big problem and the, it was like a natural disaster so he had to get her out through a bunch of foobar events he had to actually take her through what's called the hot zone where there's lots of uh, monsters and as they went and journeyed through the hot zone they learned hey these monsters are like, kind of like you know whales big giant walking whale type things that uh you know don't really fuck with anything unless they get fucked with right and then the military steps in cause a problem and we don't know if they live or die at the end but there's this big tragic part where you know it seems like they're together and then you know military stepped in and ends that well this one start off with a bunch of kids i call them kids because you know they're probably early 20s to me that's a kid but they start off with these kids uh, from Detroit and you know it starts off right off the bat with some uh, have-nots being recruited into the military against the monsters and so he starts off by saying stuff like 
what choice did I have? I could be a fucking drug dealer or I can go in the military. So that's the first indication of his moral high ground. He's like, fuck that. I'm not going to sell drugs. I'll go and fight monsters, right? So that kind of gives you a little foreshadow. And it has kind of the monologues kind of feel. It felt to me a lot like Apocalypse Now where Sheen is sitting there having these monologue moments where he's, he's kind of you know, discussing different things to help the audience along. That, that carried in here as well, right? Um, it also reminded me of Full Metal Jacket. You know, Full Metal Jacket is probably the best military movie talking about the duality of man, what man is capable of pushed inside of extreme situations. And I'll probably do a follow-up video on Full Metal Jacket because this is a good movie. Um, you know, uh, this also had feelings like American Sniper and Lone Survivor where you've got these guys, these band of brothers, you know. So stepping back, you know, it starts off really trying to build, you know, the relationships of some of the principal characters because you're sitting there watching these guys. Uh, one of the kids, you know, his, his lady's giving birth. Um, and the day she gives birth, he's going to step out with his homies for one last hurrah before they get deployed. And she's kind of like, you know, whatever, you just, you know, you need to be here. And he's like, well, me and my boys, you know, woo, woo, woo. And so he goes out and they just have the most raunchiest night out before they head out. I mean, there's drugs, hookers, you know, it's... <laughs> It's a colorful scene, to say the least. So anyway, they get deployed out, and they're in Iraq. And there's a seasoned guy out there. This dude is hard as hard can be. You know, I think he had 17 years on the job, eight tours. This is eighth tour in. Um, you got to remember now, the very first Monsters was six years after the planet is hit by the... Uh, the asteroids that seed our planet, okay? This movie takes place 10 years after. So it's 16 years after the monsters start showing up, okay? And, you know, these guys come and there's this, I mean, the, the, the scenes are epic. You just see these backdrops, you see all the stuff, and you see these monsters walking in herds and they're, they're fucking huge. You're just like, wow, and there's, you know, part tentacle comes up, tries to grab one of the helicopters and, and all this shit. And you're like, whoa, it's a pucker moment. And, you know, it's 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 got some good scenery. and um, But the thing is, the monsters are more of a backdrop. They're kind of a, they're kind of a separate story in of itself, okay? So you've got the story of the main character, how he gets in, he's doing the job, you know, and... The shit he has to deal with where they realize, hey, this is not a fucking game. This is real life. And uh, it's it's interesting. So you see you see this stuff happening. And, and part of the problem is you've got these insurgents that are upset that American troops are sitting in Iraq, right? The Americans are bombing the shit out of these monsters. But there's all kinds of collateral damage. Um, and there's one scene later on where there's a school bus that a bunch of kids are dead in, except one kid. And that's because a monster had gotten bombed. And, you know, did the, would the monster have done anything to the school bus? Probably not. These monsters, for the most part, throughout the movie, are not aggressive. They respond to certain things, right? Gunshots, uh, things of that nature. If they get fucked with, they come back. So anyway, you... You see the guys, they're going through regular missions and stuff, and then they get this one mission. And uh, the mission is basically four soldiers are deep in the hot zone where they have all the monsters, and they have to go in and extract them out. Well, the insurgents are also using these hot zones as spots where they can hide out because the military doesn't necessarily go in to engage in a hot zone. They kind of are thinning the herds as the herds step outside of these hot zones, okay? They don't go in and bomb the shit out of the the monsters inside the hot zone. It's like there's a perimeter that they're kind of watching and keeping it out. And it's, you know, like keep it out of the civilian zones. So, you know, it starts to, uh, 
starts to ask this moral question about occupation. So the premise is the American soldiers are there to protect our interests as well as take care of the monsters, keep the monsters out. So we are protecting uh, the world, right? Um, but the insurgents don't want us there. The insurgents are taking chances and coming after us. And so anyway, the soldiers are going in to rescue the four guys. It's supposed to be a quick in and out. You know, they got Humvees, they had helicopters, they got Humvees and they go in. Well, they hit an IED. And that's when shit just rapidly goes out of control. Not just for the soldiers, but for the story too, because it starts to kind of, you know, they spent this block of time getting you involved with the characters and then pretty much most of the core crew die in just one attack. Now, I get it. I get it that, you know, war is hell, things happen in the blink of an eye and lives are changed inadvertently forever, right? So, you know, one of the main guys you'd like, his legs get blown off, you know, the other guys are sitting inside the Humvee, you know, goes goes from four to three to two to one, right? And the whole time you're kind of like, it happens so rapidly that you're like, what the fuck? So then it's just left with the main character and the vet, right? And the vet's hard as fuck. I mean, he is a survivor, okay? And so this is where the morality starts to really step in, right? Because uh, they get captured by insurgents. He tells the rookie, just do what I do. You'll be fine. Um, you know, they... They escape, and as they're escaping, he says, listen, um, we do whatever we have to do at this point. So he's like, fine. So he beats the shit out of the main captor with the fucking metal pipe, and, you know, you're kind of like, all right, you know, homie from the hood, pipe, beating somebody down, and not a far, far stretch of imagination, right? Whatever. Then they come across the school bus. They got these kids all dead. They're running out of supplies. They've got no water. They've got no food. They haven't eaten for days. Um, the vet's in the bus with these rotting kids trying to find something to eat and drink to get them going still. And they come across a kid who's just barely surviving, right? He's just barely alive. So the vet's like looking at the rookie like, what the fuck are you going to do? This can't carry them shit you could barely walk as is right and the rookie's like no you can help them gotta help them so you know instead of the vet just popping the kid with a bullet or whatever he does this real intimate moment this also kind of reminded me of full metal jacket but he basically covers the kid's face like this and he just starts you know suffocating the kid and at first the rookie's kind of like he knows it's probably the right thing to do because the kid's going to slowly die and it's a faster way for him to die or whatever. And then he goes, no, 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 you got to stop. You got to stop. Okay. All right, fine. And the guy's like, okay, okay. And there's moments where the kid reaches up and it's like, help me, you know, and he doesn't say anything. He's just kind of these physical moments and, you know, it's fucking with the, the vet, you know, the fucking the vet's kind of like, you know, the veteran dude's like, fuck, you know, I mean, he's experienced and he's hard as fuck, but here his hard strings getting pulled, but he soldiers up again and he does it again. Starts to suffocate the kid again. And the, the rookie's like, oh, there's this. I mean, the acting is pretty good. Acting was really good. You, you, you can feel the, the turmoil between this shit. And he pushes him away. No, 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 stop, stop. And it's at this moment, three riders start showing up. And you're like, oh, great, these motherfuckers are going to get captured again, right? So they do get captured again, but to their surprise, it's actually just a really cool little tribal group. And, you know, they're trying to patch up the kid. They feed them. They have this moment where they're kind of as a community eating together and stuff. And they're, they're being really nice to the soldiers. And, you know, and that kind of fucks with the uh, experienced guy as well, Sarge. And so... The uh, the rookie follows one of the girls out back to the bus, and they're taking the bodies out of the bus, and they're wrapping them, you know, burial rites and stuff. And a monster shows up, one of the monsters that had been bombed previously that caused the bus accident. Uh, it's 
it starts to react to the dead one like it's really sad. It's it's tore up, and you're like, okay, these things feel emotions, and then it does something. You can't really see it because it's dark, but you hear this thunderous boom like it hits it, and all of a sudden these spores come out from the dead one, and they make these little light beam type things that are floating around and comes down and the guy's looking close and there are these little teeny tiny microbe spores that are glowing and he's like what the hell and he's kind of tripping on it and anyway he goes back and uh, Sarge is looking in on the kid that they you know that he was going to kill earlier and the kid ends up dying anyway from his wounds right so the next morning the guy comes back Sarge punches the rookie and says yeah guess what fucking hero the kid died anyway right and we got to stay on mission you're fucking up you know and what he's really saying is you're fucking me up because he's trying to do the mission he wants to go save the four guys that they came in because they've lost so many fucking guys and he doesn't want that to be for nothing right so they go and they go and they go they finally get to the spot only to find that the four guys are dead. So the Sarge is like, what the fuck? And he fucking loses it. He fucking flips out. Oh, I missed the part. And on the way, they come across this kid with this little metal can, right? And they're like, what the fuck? So the Sarge tells them, check the kid out. So they check the kid out. The kid opens up the little metal box, and there's a little monster in it. But this motherfucking monster has wings. Okay, so flutters out and I'm thinking to myself oh fucking great now these motherfuckers got wings that's all bad right and then the shit lands on the dirt and it just kind of disappears into the dirt like it digs down into the dirt hella fast like it spread out and do crazy shit and I'm like what the fuck's that all about oh no so anyway fast forward Sarge starts flipping out he goes and you know starts rounding up motherfuckers after he finds the four guys dead and he said who fucking killed those guys how they fucking die and he starts melting down he starts saying why the fuck am I here why am I here and he fucking caps one of the guys guy had innocent person completely innocent right and the rookie is like what the fuck dude what the fuck you're losing it you know what the fuck and uh you know, Sarge is like, what the fuck are we here for? Why am I here? Why am I here? And, you know, that really starts to show the anti-war movement, anti-military, because these guys go in to do the job, and they're told they're there to do something to save the world, to do something to be helpful. And a lot of times, the soldiers will tell themselves the same things to justify the horrendous things that they have to go through to survive every single day. The insurgents, the guys that that are natives, they look at the occupation as guys that are sitting there harassing their people, doing that and everything else. I mean, think about it this way. What if we had monsters here, China stepped in, occupied America, was kicking our doors in looking for insurgents, bombing monsters and blowing apart our school buses. We probably wouldn't look very favorably at the Chinese, even though they're here to help us, right? So it had a very negative connotation in regards to that. So the guy is flipping out, and he's doing stuff, and the rookie shoots him. Doesn't shoot him in the head, shoots him in the stomach. Uh, from the back, goes through front. And so the Sarge finally calms down. The people escape out of out of there. Sarge drops his gun, clips, starts walking out, and you see the mountains fucking shaking, right? And you're like, what the fuck is up with the mountains? What These monsters are big, but not that fucking big. Well, then it comes to a scene where Sarge basically strips off all of his gear, comes up, and then off in the landscape, you just see this fucking massive monster rising from the dirt. The thing is the size of mountains. It is fucking horrific. And the the rookie is seeing this shit, and at that point, helicopter buzzes over, and they come, and they get him on the helicopter. Sarge dies, and uh, and you just see the guy, the, 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 the rookie, he is no longer a rookie. He is now seasoned, and he sees stuff, and the whole time you're thinking about the monster rising up in that distance, it's fucking, it made Godzilla look like a little bitch, and what I got from that was constant attacking of the monsters caused them to continually evolve. So you saw the one with wings. I'm great now to have some fucking flying ones. Um, 
and you have this fucking monolithic beast rising up, right? And I just look at it as a message. You know, the things never were aggressive. The things didn't ever attack. But they did try to defend themselves. And as they kept dying and the spores kept coming off, the spores, I think, were learning from the corpses that they were part of, we are in danger. And so it caused a massive evolution of the things combining. So all the ones that died, I think the spores came up, went into the ground. They all collectively created this giant fucking thing. Now, is that the only one? Is that going to be the protector of the hive? Or is that the next evolution of these monsters, right? And so it almost seems like the second movie was lining up for a third movie, which would be a major blockbuster summertime. You know, oh, alien invasion of the planet. We have to stop these monsters by all means necessary, you know. But again, coming back to the first movie where it seemed like, okay, who's really the real monsters here? The humans or the monsters? The monsters are just these things that are trying to live and survive. Uh, and the secondary one is the same thing. You know, they're just hurting, doing things, and they get upset when one of them die and... They never seem to attack or do anything out of the ordinary. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, I, my take from it is, my saying anyway, don't start no shit, won't be no shit. And the humans constantly were starting shit with the monsters. And so the monsters evolved into something that could deal with that particular threat. So anyway, um, and I think that's what the dark constant part of the title comes from, is at the end because of all of the darkness and death and stuff that had happened, the monsters evolved into something darker. So that area is now the dark continent. So instead of a infected zone or a hot zone, now they're going to have something much bigger to deal with. So anyway, that's my review of Monsters Dark Continent. Um, I definitely liked it. it. It had a lot you had to read into. But if you're expecting an all-out action blah, 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 you're probably going to be a little disappointed. If you like war films, there's, a, there's enough of that in here to kind of whet your appetite. I mean, it's tragic. The shit's tragic as fuck. I'll watch it again, but, um, and I'm, I might own that on DVD when it comes out. But, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, I give it a uh, 6 out of 10 uh, to give you a point of reference. Uh, Full Metal Jacket. For a war film, probably got a 10 out of 10. I thought that movie was fucking amazing. Uh, Apocalypse Now is also a fucking 10 out of 10. Um, Fury, which is probably the closest that I could think of as far as how I felt about it going through. I give I give Fury probably a 7. So it's, Fury was just a, a little bit above where this movie is. And they... Both were just tragic as fuck, okay? So if you dig those kinds of movies, you'll probably really enjoy this, regardless of the fact that I basically just told you the whole fucking movie. But, you know, I think the acting was good. The cinematography was great. The subtext in there with the monsters and its evolutionary track was interesting. So, yeah, that's it. So if you watched the movie and you want to add comments... You know, I love to have a discussion and debate about different points. So, anyway, that's it. All right, guys. If you like it, like it. Please subscribe. Tell all your fucking friends. Till next time.